Healthy, and welcome to day 211, 211 days of the Bible in a year, reading challenge of 365. We are well on our way, friends. We are getting close to being uh, right there at the final 100-day countdown, so this is exciting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the Bible in a Year Instagram Live for July 30. So we're going to zoom in here on July 30. Boom. 2 Chronicles 26, verse 1 through 28, 27. Romans 13, 1 through 14. Psalm 23, 1 through 6. And Proverbs 20, 11. Now, as soon as this live ends, um, I will go live again, and we will do the live for day 212. And at that very moment in time, friends, we will be done with all of our readings all the way through July. So we have been reading January, February, March, April, May, June, July. That's seven months down. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Five to go. Seven down, five to go. Crazy. Uh, we're still here. We're still doing the Bible in a Year reading challenge. We're still spending time praying daily for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And diving into God's Word. And so let's go ahead and jump into our Bible in a Year for July 30, day 211. Hello, Sherry. Good to see you. And let me say hello to everyone else that's joined. We got Naomi, Megan, Nicholas, Paula, you're here. Hi, it's good to see you. And Sherry. So, um, all right. Let's go ahead and pray, and we're going to dive into the reading. Um, if you're just joining us on the Bible in a Year Instagram Live for the first time, you can go to my Instagram. You can click the link tree link in my biography. It's right at the very top of my Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram page, you're going to see a link tree link. You can click the link, and at that link, you can find... Um, the 8.5 by 11 Bible in a Year Reading Challenge, and you can also find the 11 by 17 copy of it. Hello, Nicholas. Good to see you, too. Hello, Amanda. Glad that you're here. God bless all of you who are joining me on the live right now. So excited to have all of you here with me. Okay, let's go ahead and pray, and then we will jump into, if you're following along in your Bibles, you're going to want to turn to... 2 Chronicles 26, verse 1. 2 Chronicles 26, verse 1. That's where we're going to start. And as soon as this live ends, stay by because I'm going to start the very next live and we're going to do July 31st and day 12. So, all right, here we go. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to open your word. I want to thank you that you've helped us to get all the way caught up on the Bible in a Year reading challenge. Lord, it is my prayer that you will help us to be faithful um, to be daily praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our life and spending time in your word daily. And be with me now. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this place and help me as I am opening up your word to say things that will be a blessing to those who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. That's one of the exciting things about being a part of the Bible in your reading challenge um, is that I know that God can use me if I will let him to speak the very words that you need to hear today. Okay, now, turn in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 26, verse 1. And if you're joining me on the Bible in a Year Instagram Live for the first time, um, let me just tell you, it's never too late to start the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge. You can download the Bible in a Year Reading Plan by going to the link tree link in my bio, you can download it in 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 17 and print it. And you can find all of the Instagram lives all the way from January 1 until now uh, on the Pendleton Adventist Church YouTube channel, which I also have a link for that in my bio. So, all right. Um, I want to point something out here. Um, Isaiah in 2 Chronicles 26 reigns in Judah. And it says, um, Isaiah was only 16 years old. This is 2 Chronicles 26, verse 3. Isaiah was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. 
And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. Check this out, friends. King Uzziah was only 16 years old when he started to reign. And he ended up doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because Zechariah, the man of God, was faithful in instructing him in all the ways of the Lord. And as Uzziah was following in the ways of the Lord, as Uzziah was being instructed by Zechariah, and he was fearing God rather than fearing man, he was blessed and made to prosper by the Lord. Friends, here's the thing I want to point out to you. Zechariah had to be faithful in instructing Uzziah, who was only 16 years old when he became king, in the ways of the Lord. And I want to encourage you as members of God's church that when God sends you leaders, sometimes those leaders are young, right? And what we want to do is we want to be like Zechariah. We want to instruct people in the way of the Lord. We want to be faithful to teaching people to live lives of prayer, praise, and devotion to God's word. Because as a result of the man of God being faithful to instruct this 16-year-old king in the ways of the Lord, it says that the Lord made King Uzziah to prosper, and he made the kingdom to prosper. Friends, when we are faithful to pray for our leaders, when we are faithful to instruct those that God puts in charge of us in the Lord, it not only brings a blessing upon the leader because they're doing what they should be doing, living lives of prayer, praise, and devotion, but it also brings a blessing upon the people who are in the kingdom. We gain when the leaders of our country, the leaders of our church, are doing well in the sight of God. Because when we are serving God, when we are living lives of prayer, praise, and devotion, when we surrender our lives to God, then God can bless us. God can make us prosper. God can protect us from the enemy who would love nothing more than to devour us and make our lives miserable. Okay, is there anything else I need to um, point out? Now, here's one of the things I need to point out, though. This is also in 2 Chronicles chapter 26 and in verse 16. Listen to this. Isaiah is blessed. The kingdom grows strong. Everything's going well until... Listen to what happens. 2 Chronicles 26, 16. Give me a thumbs up when you're there. 2 Chronicles 26, 16. Talking about King Isaiah and his pride. It says, but when he was strong... He grew proud to his destruction, for in his pride he was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Friends, sometimes when God is blessing us and everything is going well, we grow proud and then we start doing things that we shouldn't do. Remember, Zechariah Zachariah was instructing Isaiah from the time he was 16 years old in the ways of the Lord. But when everything was going good, when Judah was blessed, when the kingdom was going all as well, everyone's blessed, everything's going well, Isaiah becomes proud and he decides that he's going to take it upon himself to do the priest's job and he enters into the temple of the Lord and he ends up disrespecting the position of the priesthood by choosing to do what only the person who has the anointing and the calling to serve in that way should do. And as a result of Isaiah's pride, when the priests and the sons of Aaron come in and they try to stop him from what he's doing, he rebels against them. And as a result, he ends up being stricken with leprosy. And the Bible tells us that Isaiah ended up having leprosy. It started on his forehead, 
It spread all over his body until the day that he died. Friends, pride always goes before a fall. And we're usually tempted to become proud. We usually end up making big mistakes when everything in our life is going well because we forget that it's the fear of the Lord. It is do it's listening to the people who are instructing us in the ways of the Lord. It's continuing to live lives of prayer, praise, and devotion before God and respecting the religious leaders. In this case, Isaiah had the priest Zechariah who instructed him from the time he was only a 16-year-old boy when he became king. And, and, and fortunately, this person was willing to instruct Isaiah rather than tear him down because sometimes we get young leaders and instead of helping them, we step on them. Instead of instructing them in the ways of the Lord, we end up acting uh, much like, um, we, we end up, it, it, for instance, if I as a pastor end up mistreating all of the young people in my church, I, who am I serving? Am I serving God or am I serving the devil, right? So the thing is, is if I'm mistreating the people in my church and God has entrusted me to a position of leadership, man, what am I doing? Am I acting like the Lord or am I acting like the devil? Right? And so we want to be careful because remember, the Lord actually instructs us to respect leaders who have submitted themselves to God. And, and, and so if you find yourself under a leader who has not submitted themselves to God and they are mistreating you or they are trying to instruct you in going against what the Lord says, in that moment, friends, uh, you have the right to speak up and let that leader know that they are doing things that are actually against the Ten Commandments, right? So certainly God is not saying that he wants us to blindly follow leaders if they are not doing what the Lord, their God, has instructed them to do. But in this case, Isaiah is instructed by Zechariah from the time he becomes king at 16 years old. He is blessed by God. And what ends up happening? Isaiah becomes proud, and his pride ends up causing his own demise. Friends, I want to tell you something. Be careful. Be careful to remember that when the blessings of God are on your life, it's easy to become proud and forget to fear the Lord your God who has brought you out from underneath the slavery to sin and the destruction and the consequences that come with it. All right, let's go ahead and move on to Romans on July 30th, day 211 of the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge. We're in Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, 1 through 14. And I just want to focus on verse... Um, Let's start from verse 8 and we'll read to the end. It says, Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Friends, love fulfills the law and God is love. Listen to this. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up to this one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Can you believe this? People say all the time, why do preachers and pastors talk about love, 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 love? Friends, love fulfills the law. Think about it. Jesus came into the world to save us. The God of the universe, Jesus Christ, comes into the world for one purpose, to save people. Doesn't it make sense that if Jesus is willing to give his life for others, if Jesus is willing to lay down his life and die for others, doesn't it make sense that God wants us to love the people that he gave his life for? Okay, let's keep reading. Romans 13 verse 11, for those of you that are following along in your Bibles, give me a thumbs up to let me know that you are following along in your Bible as well. Here we go. Romans 13, 11, it says, Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake up from your sleep. Friends, this is a word right here that is for each and every single one listening to me right now. 
the hour has come for us to wake up from our sleep. And specifically here in this text, it's talking about apathy. Okay, it's saying, listen, you need to wake up from your apathy. You need to wake up from your sleep. You need to make the decision that you want the Lord to to awaken your heart to love others, right? For salvation, it says, is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Friends, the armor of light mentioned here is the armor of God. And the armor of God gives us the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the it shods our feet with the sandals of the gospel, the belt of truth. Guys, the armor of light is Jesus. We want to put on Jesus. Uh, Patrice says, yes, we need to wake up and go. I will go. I want to go tell my world about Jesus. And Paula Ruiz says, I need to wake up. Well, praise the Lord, because listen, when we come to that place where we know that we need to wake up, we are in a good place. Here we go. It says, Romans 14, verse 9. Romans 14, verse 9. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Friends, Jesus gave his life so that he could save those who've passed and those who are still alive. And so, friends, um, I simply really wanted to say that the rest of uh, Romans 13 here, it says, it says, the night is far gone, the day is at hand. Friends, the night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. It's saying, listen, cast off doing your own works and go to Jesus. Put on the armor of Jesus. Pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life so that Jesus can live in you and through you and shine the light of God's love through you. Here we go. Verse 13, Romans 13, 13. Let us walk properly as in the daytime. Let's not be living in orgies or in drunkenness. Let's not be living in sexual immorality and in sensuality. Not in quarreling, not in jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Friends, I want to let you in on a little bit of a secret here. If you want to stay out of sin... If you want to stay away from sin, don't live in the flesh, but instead pray for God to help you live by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit pours out, if you look in Romans 5, verse 5, Romans 5, 5 says the Holy Spirit of God pours out the love of Jesus into our hearts and it empowers us to live by the Holy Spirit instead of living by the flesh, which leads to sin. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on to our psalm reading for the day. And friends, today's psalm is Psalm 23. you got to love Psalm 23. Here we go. And I'm going to read all six verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Don't you just love that the Lord leads us beside still waters, that the Lord gives us peace, that the Lord, um, when he comes into our life, it says, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, so I, I shall not want. Why do we not want? Because if we have the Lord, we have everything we need. Verse three, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And I love this part the most. Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, if you've given your life to Jesus, then his kingdom is going to come, and his will is going to be done in your life here on earth, and you're going to have eternal life. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and let him give you life. All right. Let's go to our proverb for the day. Proverb 20, verse 11. Proverb 20, verse 11. We are in Proverbs 20, verse 11. Give me a thumbs up when you get there. Proverb 20, verse 11. And for those of you that are turning your pages, it goes Psalm Proverbs, right? Okay, here we go. We are in Proverbs 11, and it says, Even a child makes himself known by his acts. Our boat, even a child makes himself known by his acts. By whether his contact, conduct is pure and upright. Friends, even a child lets us know where they're at by what they're doing. Many of us want people to judge us by our intentions, when in fact, people actually judge us by our actions. And the proverb 20 verse 11 for today is telling us, listen, even a child by his actions is going to show you whether or not they're in a place where what they're doing is pure and upright. And so how much more do we as adults need to remember People are watching what we do. And we are being judged by our actions. And so often in this life, we want people to judge us by our intentions. But Proverb 2011 says, Even a child, even a child is judged by the actions that they're doing. And, and so friends, if we want to be representatives for Jesus Christ... If we want people to believe that the God that we serve is a God of love, then we have to remember that people are going to be watching our actions. People are going to be watching us to see if we are loving and if we display the love of God by the power of the Holy Spirit through us, then they will believe that the God we serve is love. Because friends, if we claim that we are created in the image of God and that the God we serve is love, but then we don't love others, the people in this world are going to call us liars. Because they're going to say, wait a minute, you say that you're created in God's image, which means you reflect God. And then you say that the God you serve is love, but then you're not loving at all. And so what I believe based on what I see about you is that the God you serve is not love. Because people believe, people will only believe the gospel that we preach if we live it. Okay, friends, this has been Bible in a Year Instagram Live for day 211. I'm going to be back in five minutes. So go take a break, get a drink of water. I'm going to be back in five minutes for Bible in a Year day 212, which is going to be July 31st reading. So we just got done doing the Instagram Live for July 30, which was day 211. And I'm going to come back in five minutes for Bible in a Year, day 212. Back in five minutes for Bible in a Year, day 212. I will see all of you there. Joshua, Paul Borum, Naomi. Let me see, who do we got on here? Naomi, Joshua, Paul Borum, Amanda, Megan, Trish, Lynn, Ian, and Paula, and... Um, Eunice and Sherry and Scott hope to see you all back in five minutes. We are going to do another Instagram live Bible in a year day 212. I'm going to be back in five minutes. I will see you on Instagram live in five minutes. See you then.